Hear my prayer. Oh Lord. Give ear to my cry. Hold not thy peace at my ear. For I am a stranger with thee. And so John. As all my fathers were. Oh spare me not. That I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thy ass been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever thy host formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God for thousand years in thy sight. But as yesterday, when it get as yesterday, there was a sheep in the morning. They were like grass which grow up in the evening. It's cut like grass. In the morning, they are like grass. Wither. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pasture. He leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, he may be also. And will I go, ye know. And the way ye know, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goes. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man. Come unto the Father, 
by me. Now as Christ risen from the dead, it becomes the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, mm -hmm. even so in Christ shall be made alive. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? All flesh is not the same flesh. Mm -hmm. But there is one kind of flesh of men. Another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and body terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. All right, we thank you. Make you see it. Hey, Amen. We're here today for a special day. Right. It's not just no regular fruit. This is a celebration of a life that already been lived. Wherever the Lord is, that spirit dwells within. At this time, we're going to get a selection. At this time, Yeah. Hey. 
agreement do not. I don't know about you, but I know some of the agreement. But how many know if I call on the Lord yeah. and he heard my cry, how many know God will come right then? Yeah. He won't wait till tomorrow. Yeah. And I know we're going through something on the day, but I just believe I'm a cattle called on the Lord yeah. and he heard his cry and he came quickly. Yeah. Do not pass me by. Yeah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I just came to lift up the name. Of Jesus. If I'm going to lift up Jesus in anything, I should be able to lift him up on today because I'm a tell I already do live, but we here still got to live on anyhow. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit already here. We just got to get with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I know we got the program, but it's such to change because I just believe that's a way on the inside. Let the 
the word condemn us who are not right with God on today. God, we ask you to bless everyone in this building, God. God, we bind up in the hidden spirit that come against what's here to take place on today. Well, well. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, God. Allow your grace and mercy, God, to rest upon our hearts on today, God. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 To God, see the Lord. At this time, we're going to get another selection. After that, um, the brother is coming to read the call. In that order. Yeah. 
though the world on the dark, he who let go. Amen. We thank you for the selection. At this time, Brother Ladar is coming to lead the cause. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's an honor to be here on today. First thing I've got my being here with this family, with this tough time. We are praying for you. Um, we'll read these cards. The families receive several cards. Um, they choose to read just a few, and we'll continue to address them in the company of our time. The acknowledgments. The family of Calvin Lee Edwards Jr. acknowledges with heartfelt thanks all acts of love and kindness shown to us during the loss of our loved ones. We will always withhold any great remembrance your kind expressions of sympathy, and may God continue to bless each of you. You are my thoughts and prayers. May God comfort you in this time of loss. May He give you strength to lean upon Him and assure you that you are not alone in your time of grief. With love, aunt, and aunt. with deepest sympathy, wishing you strength for today and comfort in the days ahead knowing how much your loved one meant so meant to me. From Annie Morris, Brad, and India Williams. Remembering their beautiful song. What a beautiful way to celebrate them. For the song they live. The song you'll carry forever in your heart. In sympathy and prayer, Mary Roan Jackson. With sympathy, thinking of you during this difficult time. I know it's hard to imagine, but someday the pain will lessen and your memories will replace the sadness you feel right now. With loving thoughts, Edna Williams. With sympathy. Hope it helps to know that others are with you in thought and sympathy. May God strengthen you further. To the Calvin Edwards Jr. family from Dildas Chapel's motherboard. Though this is certainly one of those times, may you never stop believing that your faith, your inner strength, and the power of God's love will carry you through. And keep the sympathy for Dildas Chapel motherboard. This letter is from the Dildas Chapel United American Free Baptist Church. 96 Hamilton Road, Elm, North Carolina. Dear Marie family, in his own way and for his own purpose, a few days ago, God, our Father, called the spirit of his beloved brother, Calvin Lee Edwards Jr., to be with him. With deep sympathy and tenderness of heart, Bishop Jesse Jones and the members of Dildas Chapel of the United American Free Will Baptist Church wish to express to you our sincere sympathy on the loss of Brother Calvin Lee Edwards Jr. The church family will certainly miss Brother Calvin supporting fundraisers by always agreeing with a loving smile and open heart to barbecue chicken or cook anything we request for our plate sales. We are grateful, we are so grateful and honored for your support at Gildas Chapel Church. Your grief at this hour is also our grief and sadness, but know what power our Lord has in times like these and how wonderful it is to lean on him when there is no one else who understands the deepness of our sorrow. Therefore, we commend the family of Brother Calvin Lee Edwards Jr. to God, who is able to comfort and cheer you. Just continue to put your unwavering faith in the Lord. Bishop Jesse Jones and Dildas Chapel Church family is praying for you. May God bless you and give you strength and his peace at this hour. When tomorrow starts to talk to me, please try to understand that an angel came and called me home and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I had to leave behind all those I really love. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. For God looked down, smiled at me, and told me, welcome home. Amen. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we are apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. Right. Arthur, I know. Give all your words and cares to God, but he cares about you. 
on the First Peter Five and Seven. Humbly submit it, Bishop Jesse Jones, Pastor, the Gildas Chapel Church family. Thank you. Hey man, hey man. Uh, we came down to the point as he said he would be on literary side. But it's time we come to the point where it's very important. It's, it's, don't tell your time down there, but it's two minutes. We try to tell everyone to keep your remarks at two minutes. Mm -hmm. If your name is not on the program, that may you allow uh, um, to give remarks and that's stay in front of the family. So we're going to do it in this order. <coughs> family. The guy in Saddle White, family, look on the elders, co worker, brother Anthony Dickey, community, brother Cornelius Gangster. We say please give her a chance to switch out the mic's cover and she come up. The guy is. I was digging. <laughs> Favorite part here. Uh, I wrestled with this uh, on my drive down from Georgia, but it, it's an easy task because it's Uncle Kelly. That's right. Uh, I want to first, of course, again, extend my condolences to the family, and I'm, I'm really honored to give remarks on behalf of my family, the Tyler White family. We've known Calvin for, let's see, you kind of old, so it's like what, 40, <laughs> so, over 40 years he's been a part of our family, and so uh, because of him, uh, We've had many a time together, but I, I want to just give this memory of, of him teaching me how to wash my car properly, he said. Um, because I would wash it, but it wasn't properly according to him. All right. So it was in those times that we were able to exchange uh, life perspective, wisdom, um, but he would always drop his voice down an octave and tell me about Jesus and that he loved me. And those two things were always took me you know, forever. He would joke and cut up, but he told me that he loved me and talked about Jesus. That's amazing. And even in sorrow and sadness and being sick, he still had faith. All right. He still held on to that perspective. And I want to leave this real note with you, and I'm going to sit down. I like to leave the thought that we understand the premise of life because with life, there's a tangible sense of celebration. We can tangibly celebrate life. There's birth, there's birthdays, there's tangible things about life that we can understand. But death, however, has this sense of Finality, like this final. And we can't seem to fathom that. But understand this. The Bible says that come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. So if in fact our sorrow today, ran out of Calvin peace and rest, is it not worth it? This moment of affliction, this moment of sadness, is instrumental to the rest that he has now with Jesus. So I say to you, today is the day of moment of sadness. But it equals an eternity of rest for him. Yeah. God bless you. Cherish one another so much that they 
even down shirt and clothes. Uh, one to wear the outfit tonight, another one to wear the outfit tomorrow. You hear them in conversation saying, uh, you gonna wear them blue shoes tomorrow night? If not, let me get them. So, they always had that type of family love. And, uh, and with Calvin Jr., I always noticed that Calvin Jr. did a lot of talking with his hands, getting his point across. I love that about him. Oh, Trisha, oh, you said, oh, you uh, apology now for when kids were small, me and Michael Charles used to come by there and run off with your husband and stay gone like hey, buddy, night. I'm sorry. We were just, we were just having fun. That's all. We're doing what we know. They say once you know better, you do better. But again, another thing about Kevin, I said he was excited about when he came over to my house one Sunday. He always nothing strange for him to stop by. He always said, boy, I did that thing today. I said, what you do? He said, I went on up there. I said, what on my way? He said, I was at church, man. I went on and gave my life to Christ. I said, well, you ain't do that. I ain't do that no time. I said, man, what I can tell, he did it in good time. God will take us young. God will take us old. And he just wants back what he gave to us, part of it. And he knows that he just wants your soul. God wants your soul to be saved. This whole stuff right here, he won't want it right. right. Flesh loves something wrong. And the devil, he loves something wrong. And you can dig into it and keep it going. But we as family going to have to learn how to stick together, love one another. Love me for me, I'm going to love you for me. Don't worry about my ways. Be concerned about your own ways. You know what I'm saying? But the thing I do know is this. When I went by to see Kevin uh, last week, we had a good long talk. We stopped by and telling him, and uh, he was nodding his head, going, yeah. I said, well, when you told me what you did when you stopped by my house, all after that, it don't matter. We got dying grace. God get us a peace of mind. It's a how you know, brother else. You ain't never died. Well, I believe in the word. I believe what it said. We'll give you peace so that you can leave here. We the one that's left back here in the struggle. Calvin Jr. is all right. Now, he wasn't all right the other night when I went by there. His eyes a little weak and stuff. And people you love, you don't want to see them like that. But I can guarantee you now, that's as sure as he gave God his heart and everything. He's all right now. So, family, you can ask your friend with it. And let's move forward. If anything happens with our love, let it become stronger. We don't need to fall apart now. I love y'all. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I want to give honor to the pulpit, all the ministers and the audience. This one is a tough one for me. Calvin was, was one of the first real people that I met when I started working with him with uh, DOT. Calvin Calvin took me on his way. He taught me a lot. I learned a lot from Calvin because Calvin has a service heart. Amen. Calvin didn't mind serving. Amen. See, in that aspect, we're all like Jesus. We're all called to be like Jesus anyway. But in that aspect, we are supposed to be just like Jesus. Because Jesus had a service heart. If you're not willing to serve, you're not going to make it. Your blessings are tied up in your service. And Calvin had a service heart. I thank you all for that because uh, I was not going to say that. I want, this is Jesus. It's not me. To Dietrich and Carlos, I've been where you guys are. A few short years ago, just before COVID, my dad passed. I know exactly where you are, but I'm going to tell you, keep your hand in God's hand. And you will make it through this. Right, Brothers, this is only for a moment. Only for a moment. Don't don't dwell there. 
Keep those memories of your father in your heart. All those good times because your daddy. Red man. Red man knew how to have a good time. He knew how to love people. On my way over here, I was riding in my truck. And there was a song, and I'm going to end with this. And there was a song that was one of your daddy's favorite songs by James Brown, Nature. Now, if you ever want to see Calvin tear the floor up, rip up a rug, put on some nature. Come on, Randy, you know what I'm talking about. I'm done. I'm done. But I'm going to miss your father, man. I love that guy. That man, he would always put a smile on your face. Even if you were down, even with everything, he went to the last time I talked to him. Over the phone. That girl had me laughing on the phone. I'm like, Tom. He's like, bro, I mean, it's just me. It's just who I am. It's who God called me to be. A servant. All right. I'm done. Thank y'all. Somebody else. 
I was shocked to get the message that Calvin had transitioned. I think it was around two years ago, Calvin told me he had joined my cousin's church. I would hear him leaving out on Sunday mornings heading to church. I'm so glad to know that Calvin knew that he was on his way home, that the road would not be easy, but with the Lord on his side, that he was preparing him for this journey. Have a good day. Amen. Let's give a little ball of remarks. Amen. We're just so thankful for all the word that has been shared. Amen. Um, the son, I think the son wanted to say something. Okay, he told me to make sure I give him the attention to see if going to say anything. I didn't know there's a word in the house. Amen. Amen. It's time for the word to go forth. Amen. We're just so great to be here on today. Once again, um, we thank God for our poor big staff and everything. So at this time, the choir will come and give us a lesson. And the great man of God will bring forth the word in us and white flower in that order. We just ask you to give him his amen. Amen. So by the choir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. Uh, I want y'all to know that I thank God for the family. Amen. And many of you might know me, many of some of you might not, but I thank God for the family. And I'm glad to be here on today. Amen. To make an attempt. Y'all hear what I said? Make an attempt to sing a song for you. Is that all right? Amen. I heard that this was his favorite song. I want y'all to know, hey, Sean Young. I want y'all to know that here. So, so take mistakes as love. But you need to know. I'm gonna say that. Think about me. Whatever I do, I do it to the glory of God. So if I'm in the wrong key, I'll stop and start again. Uh, that's what I say. I'm depending on the Lord to see him through. All of y'all that know the song, y'all hear me say, please. In my mother's care, 
know why? My mama told me that she needs to be right there. Y'all know why? I got old man. I'm a grown man. Yeah.
Glory, glory. verses 1 through 4. And it reads as follows. If then, that translated, since you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Right. And the last verse is the heavy hitter. When Christ who is your life appears, when he comes back, when he appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, that I bow before you. Father, I am grateful and thankful for this opportunity to bring words of comfort to this family, God. Father, these words are nothing without your spirit, God. Father, I pray in faith, Lord God, that you are seeing about their hearts and their minds in this very moment. I pray, God, that you will allow me to decrease as you increase. As these words from, from on high come out across this sacred desk, Lord, allow a supernatural change to occur in this atmosphere. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 Family, as I sat reflecting on Calvin's life and what it meant to the family and what his life meant to me as a friend and a loved one, I cried. I broke down a couple of times, but after breaking down, I also laughed a couple of times because to know Calvin, is to have loved Calvin. This brother lived his life to the fullest. And, with, and whenever you saw him, you would see him always having conversations with people. And you would be like, you would be saying in your own mind, like, does this man know everybody? Because he never met a stranger. Calvin never met a stranger. So let us go and get the lighthearted stuff out of the way first. So Calvin had a few things that he loved. Um, and I know that Dietrich and, and, and Carlos can attest to this. He loved cologne. He loved a nice outfit. He loved shoes. He loved a clean car. You know, 
but he, he also loved the nice haircut. So for those of y'all that don't know, I'm a barber. And I used to be his barber. And he was funny about that haircut. He would wear a little skin fade, wavy on top, dark beard. Uh, but Calvin was a little funny about that mustache. You know, that mustache didn't quite, didn't quite grow the way he desired for it to grow, so I had to be a little particular about how I was grooming that mustache. But understand, though, when Calvin put all of these things together that he loved, just know that Calvin was probably putting these things together to go out and have a good time. He was going out somewhere to cut a rug. He really lived his life to the fullest, and he really was the life of the party. That's right. Calvin loved cutting grass. He loved washing cars. He loved cooking. Yes. Calvin, like my brother said earlier, had a servant's heart. He had a servant's heart. He would not deny you the help if you would help yourself. Amen. If you ever showed Calvin that you was not about helping yourself, that was the end of his service for you. <laughs> family, today, family matters. I don't care what it is that you're sitting with today, family matters. And family mattered to Calvin. Calvin loved his family. Calvin loved his boys. He loved his grandbabies. Calvin loved so hard that he illustrated it by how he communicated when he came around myself and others because he talked about y'all all the time in this soft voice. It is, I, I don't know, but he was a strong man, but he would talk to you in this soft voice and he would communicate his love for his family in such a way that you knew that the love that he was communicating was genuine. Amen. You knew that this love that he was communicating was unconditional and far-reaching. Family, God the Father had a plan. Glenn, God the Father had a plan and a purpose for Calvin's life. And I believe that this purpose and this plan was fulfilled. Ask me why. I was an eyewitness and so were some others in here. Was an eyewitness to the transformation that took place in his life in his latter days. There was a shift. There was a shift that took place in his life. Calvin was, let me pause for a second. Let me pause for a second. <laughs> Sickness and death has a way of ministering to us in a way that nothing else can. So in the end, Calvin was confessing some stuff. In the end, Calvin was calling on the name of Jesus. In the end, Calvin and I would hold hands and pray in the name of the Lord. So understand, I may not be the only one, but I'm telling you about what I witnessed. Because I was there in times past and we weren't holding hands. We weren't holding hands praying to Jesus. We weren't holding hands calling on the name of the Lord. We was calling on something else. So understand, there was a shift that took place. Family, do not be discouraged. Don't be discouraged in this moment. Do not be discouraged because Calvin kept the faith. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put Calvin in. Trust me when I tell you that. But with what I witness and but with what I know, what the word of the Lord tells me, I believe that he is with the Lord. The Paul taught us, he said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I beg of you, family, hold on to the memories. Reflect back on the good times. Hold on to them. Be glad in this moment. And I understand some of us might not understand why we will be glad in this moment with his remains laying across this, uh, in the front of this lecture. But I'm going to share with you in a moment why you should be glad. Family, I know it hurts because I'm hurting. But in moments like these, we need a helper. A true helper, not a temporary fix. 
We need someone that can come and dry our tears. We need someone that can come and mix, help us make six of all of this. We need someone that can come and help mend our broken hearts. We need someone that can come and help figure out, help us figure out these thoughts that are in our mind. I beg of you today. I submit to you today that the person of the Holy Spirit wants to give this to you in this moment. Whatever it is that you're sitting with, if it's pride, if it's selfishness, if it's selfish ambition, if it's unbelief, if it's doubt, ask him to come on in so you can release it. And he will do just that. He will come in and heal. And not only will he come in and heal, he will restore. So family, with everything that I have in me, I'm begging of you to trust them in this way. Trust them with every fiber of your being. Give him what's due him. We're talking about the creator. The creator of us all. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all of us that dwell therein. We're talking about the creator. He deserves our best. So even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of heartache, even in the midst of sickness and death. The spirit of the true and living God is calling all of us, not just the bereaved family, but he's calling all of us to something in our lives. Something that he desires for us to do. Not for me, not something that I conjured up in my own mind, but something that he planned before the foundations of the world. Because this is who he is. This is who he is. He is God and God all. Mighty. Thank you. I thank you, Lord, that Romans 8 and 28 speaks to me in this moment that all things, even in death, all things come together, work together for the good of those that love God and are the called according to his purpose. There's even purpose in this moment. There's purpose in this moment, family. So as we are here today, to say goodbye to a father, as we're here today to say goodbye to a grandfather, as we're here to say goodbye to a brother, we're here to say goodbye to a cousin, a nephew. We might not be here just to say goodbye. Some of us may be here for a dual purpose. That is to say goodbye to Calvin and say hello to Jesus. Even in this, we must glorify the Lord. Yes, sir. Family, in order for us to glorify the Lord, there must be a shift in our mindset. We must shift from an earthly mindset to a kingdom mindset. To truly understand what happened on the 4th of February, you've got to have a kingdom mindset. A natural mind can't understand spiritual things. So there needs to be a rebirth. So I thank you, Lord, All right. that even in this, you should get the glory. Paul says in Colossians 1 and 4 that he, in these verses, he's really teaching us how to shift our mind from an earthly mindset to a kingdom mindset. Even when we're facing death, then my thinking needs to be heavenly in order for me to be able to identify with Christ. Because I need to identify with Christ. And in order for me to identify with Christ, the sum total of my life needs to be hid in Christ. So rather than having a, a earthly perspective, I need to have a kingdom perspective that is perfect in every way versus having an earthly perspective that is futile at best. Because this life that we feel that we live in this earth, it is temporary. Verse 1, third chapter of Colossians. Paul speaks about Jesus being seated at the right hand of the Father. He's seated. This, this is why this matters. Because that seat at the right hand of the Father is a place and a position of majesty and of honor. And he intercedes for us daily. But not only does he intercede for us daily, for those of us that will believe, mm -hmm. 
He also supernaturally releases spiritual gifts, spiritual talents, spiritual blessings, and ultimately the will of God for our lives. How many of y'all really want to know what the will of God is for your life? Yes, sir. So even in the midst of death, Jesus is sitting at the right hand and he desires to heal our hearts. Even in the midst of death, Jesus desires to strengthen that which remains. And that is the family. Jesus desires to strengthen the family. Even in the midst of death, there is still a plan. Carlos, Dietrich, there is a legacy that you must step up to the plate and carry on. You must step up to the plate and carry it on. Your brother is charging you today because I love you. Love doesn't always say the thing that is easy. Set your mind on things that are above and not on things that are of the earth. Why does this matter? Because in our innermost man, we must have this inner disposition that points my mind towards the kingdom idea because we can't just do it on our own. Because when we do it on our own, we get what we get. So when we receive this kingdom mindset from the Lord, he releases the realities. He releases the realities about our life and anything that is dealing with life or death. So to completely believe and to rest in God, God will release the provisions and the protection from heaven for any situation that shows up. So understand, if you are sitting here today with doubt, understand the Father wants to deal with that doubt. But you have to allow him to come in. Let him in so he can deal with the doubt. So if there is any discouragement in the room today, let him in so he can deal with the discouragement. If there is any damaged relationships in the family, and understand, I have a family too. If there are any damaged relationships, allow him to come in so the relationships can be fixed and mended and made well and made whole. And only God can help us do that. Only God can help us do that. The earth has no sorrow. The heaven can't heal. How many times have we heard that at funeral? This is not cliche, family. This is Jesus sitting at the right hand saying, this is what I want to release into your life. Favor and blessing. So finally, our identities are hidden in Christ. Our identities are hidden with Christ in God. So simply put, God showed his love towards us that while we were yet sinners he decided to die he made a decision to die knowing how we were going to be rebellious against him because he knew he was going to send something later that would help us get back into right fellowship so being in Christ being hidden in Christ gives us the ability and gives us the access to walk in this newness of life, which is supernatural. This is not snap your fingers. This is him doing something behind the scenes that we don't get to give our word in on, pitch our, pitch our tent around. When he decides to do it, it's done. So as we walk, family, we should take on the character of Christ. As we walk, family, we should be taking on the attributes of God. As we walk, family, we should be caring and sharing for each other in such a way that it is pleasing to God. Hmm. Family, as I was preparing this message, this dropped in my spirit. And uh, he was dealing with me. He won't do it. This ain't about y'all. He was dealing with me. The funeral or a funeral was never intended to replace the family reunion. Mm. All right, man. Let us get back. Let us get back to what pleases God. Let us get back to what
what will please grandma and grandpa. Let us get back to what we know will please Carol. And my last thought, I'm gonna get out of the way. Let me read it. Verse four. With Christ, who is your life, appears. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you shall, then you also will appear with him in glory. We don't have to be deep. He's coming back. He, he's coming back. He's coming back. I know we don't hear this a lot, but he's coming back. Family, no man's know the day or the hour. No man knows the day or the hour. But you can rest assured that he is coming back. Calvin has fought a good fight. He has finished his course. He has kept the faith. And I believe that there is a crown of righteousness waiting on him. Family, so there is a question. When this great day comes, and it's coming, will we be ready? Will we be ready to rule and reign with him for a thousand years? Or will we be caught with our work undone? Jesus is standing with his hands, his arms stretched wide. We're ready to receive anyone that is willing to receive him in spirit and in truth. Will you surrender today? Will you surrender? Because that is what is required. So in this life, if we will receive the table that he has prepared, he changes us in the now and eternity. So we do not lose heart, though the inward man is perishing every day. I mean, the outward man is perishing every day. The inward man is being renewed day by day. Jesus has given us the victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Family, in my closing, we serve a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then he made us in his likeness and in his image. We are spirit. We are soul. We are body. When Calvin breathed his last on the fourth. When Dwight breathes his last whenever. The body goes back to the dust. The spirit goes back to the father. The ruach, the breath, the breath of God goes back to the father. But there's, the soul is remaining. Your soul is remaining. And what we confess with our mouth, what we believe in our heart, in the earth realm today will determine whether we get to reign with him or remain with him or he casts us into the lake of fire. Family, let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's again, Lord, that we bow our heads before you. Father, we are grateful and we are thankful for this word that has come forth today. We're grateful and we're thankful for Calvin and his life and the love that he has shared, God. This great cloud of witnesses is evidence of how great of a man this was, God. I thank you, Lord, for the hedge of protection that you will place around this family, God. Within this hedge, allow there to be an abundance of love, an abundance of joy, an abundance of peace, God. Render to them that joy that surpasses all understanding, that peace that surpasses all understanding, God. Fix anything that is broken, mend anything that needs to be sewn back together, God, because that is who you are. Father, I pray in faith, God, believing that it's already done. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It's in the hands of the mortician.
All right. Huh?
Yeah. 